Okay, here's a time waster. I was out in the garage digging around and I found this and I had made a previous video on it. And I was uh, talking to Radio TV Phone on that today and he was telling me how much he enjoys old Japanese electronics. So I figured I'd pull it out and see if I could get it to work. I believe this is a Viscount. Seventeen EW eight fifty C five, so it's got a solid state rectifier and it's not in the best of shape. Very, very Japanesey. Union Company, so who who knows? That could have been the person importing it, the company importing it. Let's see it's got a GE tube there. So I remember there was a previous video that included this. I remember it did pretty much nothing, and there's a tag on the plug here that says dead small hum. So let's uh, see what it does. It's all almost all disc cap. Except I see hidden right down there is one of those gray Japanese. Oh, here's another one. Riken. 10 M at 50 volt. I guess that means 10 microfarad. That looks like a cathode bypass, which shouldn't really make it completely not work. Well, <clears throat> the dial cord is not working, which is not very complicated on this. And I could not find any schematic on this, so this is really just a shot in the dark. Um, I'm going to have to just go off experience with this thing. Uh, AM seems to work mar very marginally, though. Good there four wins. They have given the ball. <laughs> That's very marginal. Uh, let's see. This is FM. So the first thing I could do is try testing the 17 ME8 or whatever it was. Some really weird 17 EW8. Because this tube does nothing on AM. I pulled it out of there and before the filaments cooled off the radio kept going. So this is a converter. First IF. Second IF detector. I'm injecting directly into the uh, first IF amp, pin one of that tube, and look at how wide this thing is. That's really hard to hear it. Start to hear it there at 10. Seems like it kind of peaks at 10.4, again at 10.5. Again at 10.8, then it drops off about 11. So the IF bandwidth the IF bandwidth is a whole megahertz wide. Either I got something hooked up wrong, or this thing's got very, very jacked up or non-existent capacitors in the IF strip. Let me. I'm gonna. I'm going to move it down and inject it into here. Okay, look at the difference here. This is the, see that orange thing there? That's the detector, the FM detector diode. And if you can see, there's another one down underneath it. In that plastic tube, there's two of them there. So those are the detector diodes, FM. So this is the FM, this is the final FM. So I'm going to go into pin one of the second FMIF. Now I'm going to go into pin one of the first FMIF. This one should be ten times louder, right? I mean... It 
This might be interesting to sweep this radio. This might be, there's just such a lack of sensitivity. I mean, I got this thing cranked up. Negative 20, that's, it's negative 10. I mean, that's, it should be like way down here. Give me a capacitor there. That's weird. It's almost like there's no gain in that tube. I wonder if I got a bad tube. I've, I've uh, been a bigger idiot before. Well, changing the tube made an immense difference. It made a 40 dB difference. And it tightened it up, but I still don't think we have any FM reception. Well, I turned it over and moved that tube around, and it seems to... very distorted and the channel the thing is very narrow program director Derek Madden whose show comes on right after our show he's got an answer Else. On the radio, on the TV show, I have to tell the truth. And you know what? If I'm wrong, I got to man up and say I was wrong. Well, the fact is that the sensitivity is there, so it's not the front end. It's probably something in the IF. I check these tubes. I need to test these tubes. Taking a closer look at this one, the getter is almost completely gone on it. So, um,. So it shouldn't be all distorted was like that. I was there from God, the sound quality is just so totally awesome. Maybe this is what it sounds like when the IF is like five or six hundred kilohertz wide. Still got a double, starting to sound better, but I got a double hump here. We're 
going to sweep it here. And I don't have the schematics, so I'm just going off the instructions for a GE. They're all the same. So I clipped the stabilizing capacitor out of there, which is bad because it didn't do anything. <laughs> Look at it clipping. Damn, it's sensitive. This one sensitive radio. Of course, on the weaker stations, it won't distort. Oh yeah. That's about what it's that's about what it sounds like too. Look at how wide that thing is. Look at how wide that is. It's wow. That's going into the final IF. Let's back it up one stage. Cut the uh Cut that down. Let's, let's go into this one. Now that looks a little better. Still way too wide. I wonder why it's so wide. I kind of swore I wouldn't turn the cores, but guess what? First thing I'm going to turn this one. You know, I'm going to turn this one here. Now this to me is almost a sign of bad IF capacitors. See how it's way too wide for one thing. And narrow it down a little bit, but it's peaking off 10.7. Now see, it should be peaked right about there. But it's not, it's kind of peaking way off to the side. Let me look at this. End up getting their emotional and their spiritual needs met as well. And um, that's what we try to do every single day in the lives of people like Melissa. You know, right behind. Thank you. 
her name. You know. Okay, this is going through both IF stages, and the first IF stage, the transformer is jacked up. I'm almost certain the capacitors are a tad off, because it's peaking a bit high. But here's what I got. And it's actually, the way I did it was um, by looking at the S-curve and adjusting all of them for the S-curve, because with this one being off, I couldn't get it the other way. And then what I did is I went and I double-checked it with the VTVM and the um, signal generator method where I peaked everything on 10.7 and then adjusted it for zero volts. So this capac this, the capacitors in this IF can here are uh, probably drifting or slightly off value, which is no surprise when something's 50 years old. You can actually see the difference in the audio now. Free pub, just two seventy seven each. Then there's Coke, Diet Coke, or Coke Zero. Twelve pack, twelve. Hello, you all. Food bag. You can see how it's not all clipped and off to one side. So anyway, sounds really good now. And the AFC is rock solid too. It locks it right on. It actually snaps from one. The owner has to pack. Two thousand dollars. Hey, thanks, Chief. <laughs> Big difference. You think this cathode bypass you think this cathode bypass capacitor is open? It only gets twice as loud when I pop a new one across it. These Japanese electrolytics are just garbage. Okay, continuing on with the uh, what I believe is a Viscount. You see that little hoop right there? Well, there used to be one right there that's half broken off, and there used to be one back here that's half broken off. And the spring, I believe, used to attach here, and this this one here was through here. So this is my idea to fix this. Uh, with a more permanent, longer lasting type uh, setup. Okay, what I've done is I've just, I don't care about this radio. This is pretty much just for a video and a time waster while I wait for some people to show up here. So I just tacked in, um, this one is a 10 at 50 volts, that's a 10 at 50 volts. I just pulled these out of a uh, one of those EOL TV chassis that I had around here. This is a, that gray one down there is a four points, is a five at 50 and I put in a 4.7 at 50 and um, I left the old ones in there. They're just kind of hanging with one wire cut out. So if the next owner comes along and sees this, they'll, they'll curse me out and say what a horrible job I did and, but they'll have a reference as to if there is a next owner. Now on this right here, the 
this this actually works okay my but it, it slips because this thing is really tight because these bearings are full of old dry hard grease and I don't know how to get that out of there except um, boil it or totally disassemble it and clean it with like lacquer thin or alcohol or something so I'm just gonna have to deal with it until it loosens up I did squirt some oil down in there but it seems to have gotten even tighter kind of kind of crappy I'm sure as the radio chassis heats up because it's really cold it's about 45 degrees out here or something right now or the chassis is I'm sure as it loosens up I put some of this 030 down in there as this thing loosens up it'll you can see it's already but I need to get that grease out of there so next uh, thing maybe I'll test these tubes so here's the good IF tube. Here's the other IF tube, the one that was the main cause of the radio not working, the first FMIF. Absolutely nothing. And sometimes you could take these things and bang them on a good hard wood surface. This is one way to kind of clear shorts. Still nothing. It must have an open cathode or something. It's glowing. The filament's not out. It's just dead. Swift will be dining with princes. William and Harry extend her. Señor Kun Ramirez. 
were right. I said, Dr. Pincus, I can't believe it. 30 minutes after I set the Calmax, the pain in my... Now check up our CBS 2 weather forecast for Southern California. For that, we turn to CBS 2 meteorologist Amber Lee. Mostly sunny skies today with temperatures still hovering below where we should be this time of year. For the valleys, expect mostly sunny with temperatures in the upper 60s. For the beaches, we will see some clearing. Temperatures will be in the upper 60s as well. And for the LA Basin, temperatures also in the upper 60s, maybe in the low 70s for some areas. For me, CBS 2 But here's the problem with that in just a moment. But Phone lines for open line health questions. And Cam Newton was slow getting up. 1314 budget act. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. Some people think their emergency money is liquid. Definitely a lack of sensitivity on the AM band, especially on the lower end of it. Risk. That's, That's right. the volume is wide open. The most TFS, LC dealer for details. Vehicles must be purchased from new car dealers. Maybe I should just say it's not a Zenith product and leave it alone. But it's probably way out of alignment. I didn't even check the AM alignment. Or the converter tube or anything else. Help. Loads of money that we simply do not have. Chamber Orchestra conducted by Jurg Farber. Hi, I'm Rich Caparella with you weekday afternoons between. Uh, we keep fighting these wars one after another, and both of them. This, this may happen. Actually, I was calling to ask him to pray for him. There's Channel 6. Television Channel 6. Okay, enough of this thing.